There is a somewhat murky debate to be had about homage watches when it comes to the world of horology. They are neither universally loved nor universally hated. And so I think before we get into a video on what is very unapologetically a homage, I thought it was worth the time to explain my viewpoint on it to help frame the discussion to come. I tend to view things on a case by case basis rather than holistically. And while I'm frankly bored to tears of Submariner, Daytona and Moonwatch clones, something more quirky like the 1921 really caught my attention. The model on which this is based, the Vacheron Constantin Historic American 1921, retails north of $30,000, depending on the specific model you're looking at. Now, I hope this channel is testament to the fact that I love watches. But even if I had that kind of spare change lying around, there is no way I would be spending it all on one watch. So the idea of ever actually owning something of that ilk is frankly completely out of the question. That is where the boldly comes up once again. For clarity, this is the mechanical version I'm testing today to see whether or not it's worthy of being a keeper in my collection or if it needs to find a new home on eBay. With all that said, let's get into the video. Before we really get into the Boltony, I do think it is pertinent to discuss the historic American a little further, as if we're going to look at the design philosophy behind this model, we might as well look at the real thing. As the name clearly suggests, you're looking at a design that is over a hundred years old at this point, and quite clearly, this is not the standard layout or format for a modern watch. Now, I should just make it clear that this is not a model that has been in production non-stop for the past hundred years, but something that was brought back to celebrate its anniversary with a contemporary version. The watch's development was keenly reflective of its time of production, the dawn of the automotive era. It is this milestone in human history that explains the slanted design of the watch style, where everything has been rotated to make the watch easier to read while it rests atop a steering wheel. The crown too has moved up to the top right hand corner of the watch from the traditional position at three, giving this watch an iconic look that isn't easily mistaken for anything else. When it comes to the Boltony itself, there are a fair few versions available for you to consider. The differences aren't just skin deep, there are impacts on the dimensions depending on which model you're looking at. The quartz models are powered by a Seiko VD78, coming at 9.1mm thick and weigh 54 grams. The automatic movements are powered by a Seagull ST1701, coming at 10.5mm thick and weigh 70 grams. And finally, the model you're seeing featured in the video, the mechanical hand-wound version, is powered by the Seagull ST1700, is 9.5mm thick and weighs 67 grams. All of these versions come with the sub-second dial, but there is another model without that sub-second dial that comes with a Miyota 9039 automatic movement. It's 10.4 mil thick and weighs 66 grams. That better known movement comes at a cost though. This version is usually listed at double the price of the others. The price for all of the models fluctuates wildly depending on what sales and promotions are currently running. I paid just over $100 for my mechanical version. I think the extra 1 mil less thickness is worth sacrificing the automatic element for. It's also a little cheaper, comes with a smooth sweep on the subdial, and doesn't really cost much more than the quartz version. So that was my personal preference, but of course the beauty of all this choice, you can do your own mental gymnastics to find what works best for you. The choice doesn't end there of course, you also have to pick between a black, salmon and white dial and either a stainless steel or gold plated case. In this regard, I don't think there's actually a bad choice to be made. They're all pretty tasteful options and all thin enough to fit under a cuff for formal wear, as despite the racing inspiration, really this is a dress watch. As far as the design goes, while I certainly wouldn't give Boltony any credit for the way this watch looks, it does still look pretty good. Everything is well proportioned, there's a good balance of white space, 
the Breguet numerals are on point, and the blued second hand is a nice little premium touch, even if it doesn't match the rest of the handset. Apart from the obvious comparison to the original model on which this is based, it is still a very unique looking piece that will stand out in any collection, especially in the budget space. I'd also add here that this is my first experience with Boltney as a brand, and I was really impressed with the build quality on offer here. This does not give you the impression that it's a low budget homage. It's solid all round and ships in a neat leather travel pouch. One minor point of consideration is the finishing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually really well done considering the price point, but there are a lot of high polished surfaces. So this watch is a bit of a magnet for smudges and fingerprint marks, as I'm sure you'll have been able to pick up on already at this stage of the video. When it comes to downsides, I think my biggest issue with the Boltony 1921 is its sizing. As I'm sure many of you will be aware, square watches are often deceptive in terms of their sizing, as their diameter doesn't take into account how much wrist space they're gonna take up compared to their round counterparts. Whereas the Vacheron Constantin ships at 40 and 36 mil sizes, the Boltney is 38 mil which you would think is a good compromise, but it still wears a little too large for my tastes. I apologize for not being entirely clear on the point I'm about to make, as there are so many individual variants of this watch, and some specifications list very little detail and some conflict with each other in terms of sizing. I'm not entirely sure whether all the watches are 38 mil or if there are other sizes available. Boltney have their own website and I would advise to check any model you are buying against those listings to be sure of exactly what you're buying if you're shopping elsewhere like AliExpress for example. I'll also add here that recently I've had a number of people in the comments highlighting the idea that white dials feel bigger aesthetically even if they aren't. I can't say I've had that experience before but I do think it might be a contributing factor to my viewpoint here. Whether or not you feel comfortable wearing something that is such a blatant homage like this is really a judgment call that only you can make. As fans of horology, we know Vacheron as one of the holy trinity, one of the oldest and most respected watch brands out there. However, members of the general public are far less likely to have any awareness of them, or indeed the historic American. This isn't going to put you in a situation where someone is going to come and ask you, oh, is that a Rolex? Because you're wearing a dive watch and they all look the same. That being said, given the unique design, it is going to draw some attention and no doubt some questions. While I would always prefer original design, I do think, as I've mentioned that, in this instance, the overwhelming majority are never going to see, let alone own, the real thing. So I feel it's a little easier to rationalize. But like I say, that's a personal decision for you to make. As I've said time and time again on the channel, dimensions are king. And while I've had a really positive impression of this watch overall, the fact that it feels too big for me is enough to make my mind up. I'm gonna be selling this watch on. Having said that, I don't look at this purchase as a mistake. I've gained a couple of things from the experience. Firstly, I now have a deeper interest in Boltney, given the impressive quality control, specifications, and value for money on offer here. And I'll be keeping a keen eye on their releases moving forwards. Secondly, the historic American 36 mil might just have made itself onto my list of unattainable grail watches. I really wasn't sure what I'd think of the slightly design language, but I was genuinely taken by the on-wrist experience here. And then spending time looking over the advertising and specs for the Vacheron, my word, it's gorgeous. Please don't let the takeaway for this video be that you think I don't like the Boltney either. Now that the channel has grown a little and I've started to buy models to review, I have to be very picky about what I keep, otherwise I'd simply run out of room in the collection. If you like the look of the 1921 and have a slightly larger wrist than me, I'd go so far as recommending a purchase. With all that said, what are your thoughts on this model? Would it be a keeper for you? Or are there other budget slanted models that you'd recommend instead? 
let me know in the comments below. As ever, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen or found it informative, consider dropping the video a like and subscribing if you want to see more content like this.